What, my freaks? Rowan is inside here with part, uh, I want to say, 18, 19, 18 or 19 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So, as we saw last time, we got more of vassals, or at least one, a new vassal in the form of Clan Eshin here as we stormed Kunlun with Kuhar and have finally begun to move him back southwards. We plan to hit the Iron Dragon, the western provinces, and destroy them here and then start moving through their territories northward through the Blessed Dreads fighting some Dark Elves and then have Kolek move southward and then meet in the middle of vassalizing or destroying the Blessed Dread and then moving towards the sea lanes towards A. Illustria and B. probably the uh, eastern colonies in order to go and find Big Bird and uh, and force him to be our vassal as well. And we do have to collect them all, after all. In addition to that, for Valky's temerity, we did have Azazel punish her and her army, and uh, very successfully, I might add, as uh, Valky's main stack is destroyed, and now we are moving towards taking the rest of her territory, and hopefully vassalizing her or confederating her as well. Though hopefully uh, Nagarond uh, doesn't uh, try to pull a Valkia and uh, destroy her. And we also have Sigvold actually available in two turns, so we did manage to keep him after all, and I'm still a riding that high. Anyway, in terms of what we gotta do this time, we have a massive public order issue problem, etc. So we are going to send Archeon for a, a quest battle to get the public order bonus out of that particular thing. In fact, I guess we could do that pretty much immediately here. Uh, in order to do that, we have to... let's see... Oh, okay, you're rank 6, so what we could do is we could pop you into Chaos Knight form, get another Chaos Knight. Once again, I remember that Dark Aeon's uh, fights are rather tough, and... I guess, Prince Ograx, you've been with us the longest, so you get your own set of Chaos Knights of corn like so. We'll do Nurgle next, and then, well, we already have Zinch, so uh, there we go. Alrighty. Uh, they are at rank 1, so unfortunately they'll be considerably weaker in terms of stats compared to the uh, Chaos Knights of Zinch by the looks of it, but, well, uh, that'll change over time. We'll need to start racking up their XP anyway. Then, what about you guys? I mean, we could upgrade them to Chosen right now, but at the same time, we don't have the uh, buffs for the Chosen, and we do currently have the upkeep reduction for the Chaos Warriors, so maybe it's not super necessary. I'm gonna say it's not super necessary. Anyway, I believe that's all that we can do for now for this army, so before we get started, once again we were able to reach the engagement threshold, so this will be an hour-long episode, and the offer does still stand. 300 likes, 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Armor more car. We're gonna give you a read and then we're gonna jump right in in order to get this. Control plus 25 to all provinces for two turns and I'm sure the casualty or punishment won't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, the basic army is quite weak but I don't know what the reinforcements are but I'm sure they'll be quite a bit tougher than this since the uh, battle for uh, the Slayer of Kings was already reasonably tough way back then. Anyway, what does this have to say? The Realm of Chaos plays fast and loose with the concept of time once the devout Templar of Sigmar, Templar priest of Sigmar, Archeon searched ancient texts for the means to destroy chaos, but was exposed to a terrible truth. Rejecting his former gods, he swore himself to the service of dark masters instead. He had also discovered scrolls detailing several artifacts of power and a great warrior who used them to gain the blessing of all the ruinous powers. Archeon vowed to become this man. Thus, he must travel to a monolith in the chaos wastes raised to the glory of a chaos champion, where the twisted ground is littered with skulls from whence screams of malice arise. A challenger comes. So, the armor of Morkar. Away we go. Alrighty, close victory. Ooh, he's got a great chaos dragon. As a mount, well, that's just swell and... Oh my. <laughs> Oh my, that's, uh, okay, that's a little bit tougher than I thought it was gonna be. That's a lot of Chaos Knights. Huh. Okay, we're going to have to be very careful with protecting our poor little single Hell Cannon here. And that's certainly gonna be an issue. They will just plain outnumber us. Interesting. Interesting indeed. And... Okay, yeah. And uh, let's see, War Banner, we're gonna pop you on, I guess, one of the Knights. 
I'm tempted to give the Banner of Rage to Archeon, but frankly, every single unit of ours is gonna need every single buff that they can get. Uh, let's see what we can do. Is this now or centuries ago? Archeon cares not. His eyes are only on the prize worn by the challenger. Should he win, he gains another relic of the ever chosen, the armor of Morkar himself. But first he must be victorious, and such trials will be anything but easy, for the Dark Gods take great delight in playing with their champion, especially those something for greatness. This fool dares challenge me. He thinks I care about his trivial lust for power. I will teach him a bitter lesson. One for all who defy me. Who dare to oppose the will of the Chaos Gods. Here is a maggot to make an example of. It will be a warning to all the chieftains of the North. Now, my followers, let us attend this tiresomeness. By dusk, I wish to be swilling the maggot's blood in his upturned skull, while channeling his rabid spirit into Morka's armor! Alrighty, away we go. Let's see if we can handle this. That's a lot, and I mean a lot, of Chaos Knights. So, uh, remains to be seen. We're going to start the battle up by annoying the enemy lord a little bit, getting a few of those blue fires of Zinch out of the way, and hitting them down to half HP, and ooh, he's got too close now, so we're going to have to back away. But, and that did seem to work out reasonably well, and he seems a little bit miffed about about the whole situation. Looks pretty good on that uh, Chaos Dragon. Uh, though we've got to get some of these guys of our own on the field when we can. Anyway, we're going to drop the Chronicler down to the ground so that the enemy is forced to land to chase him and thus forced to contend with Archeon. And obviously there's no way he's taken Archeon on, already losing a quarter of his HP and a couple more hits will bring him down. All right, and there he goes. <laughs> and kind of rolls away from his... Uh from his dragon. Unfortunately for us, it looks like the death of the enemy lord does not make for the end of the battle. Or perhaps fortunately, depending. Uh, still gonna have all of these knights coming in for, from the left flank and all of these infantry units all over the place and whether we can hold and definitely remains to be seen i'm gonna keep firing away with our single hell cannon as the enemy army is forced to walk over the uh, uh, the corpse of their lord to get to us. If nothing else, that's got to be at least a little bit demoralizing. We're going to reposition all of our Chaos Knights in order to fight the enemy knights, and here we go, Corn Knights versus our regular Chaos Knights facing off against each other. It's axes versus swords. I would imagine the axes should be a little bit superior there. Actually, just out of curiosity, just compare the armor piercing done by the Chaos Knights of Corn versus the regular Chaos Knights. Although ours do a lot more damage than theirs do or should. 41 armor piercing on you versus... Oh, wow, they are buffed. What the heck? 102 weapon strength. Huh. They actually hit harder than our knights do? That's kind of impressive. Uh, they have that chaotic blessing activated, duration 60 seconds, and that's from their being undivided, but we do get frenzy and much higher melee attack. Anyway, uh, the enemy are moving in. We've created a little semicircle defensive position here, and we're going to try to do our best to hold the uh, two units of aspiring champions and Harald Hammerstorm out front, and, well, really nobody protecting the Hell Cannon from the back, but hopefully we won't need to. We gotta meet the rest of these Chaos Knights in battle. And I guess by not having regular Chaos Knights in our army, it makes it a lot easier to pick our knights apart from the anime knights, which uh, I guess is something of a boon here. I do see some of the Chaos Knights of Corn have fallen. Seven of them have gone down, and we're down to half HP, and we're going to have to back them off. However, we back them off at the right time, pop the Tormentor's Sword, and then get the Infernal Gateway active right on top of them to damage as many as possible while they try to give chase to the... Yeah. 
uh, to the Chaos Knights of Corn. Archeon is also in the middle of the fight, and as we can see, he is dropping enemy Chaos Knights and Marauders left and right. They have no chance of taking him down. In fact, his HP is just fine, and he can keep a few of them at least distracted. Speaking of distracting, we have our two units of Marauder Horsemen, or Horse Masters, and Horse Masters, I should say, over on the rightmost flank, keeping three of the enemy units of Chaos Warriors and Marauders away, while the other units of Marauder Horse Masters use their javelins to hit the knights in the back while they're held in place by the Swords of Chaos. You can see the uh, and javelins in the corpses of all those knights. And they're not able to use those shields when they get javelined in the back, so it is working slowly but surely. And we can bring the knights on this flank down in this manner. I gotta keep holding the line, however. Some of the knights have peeled away from our own and have moved in to attack our Chaos Warriors. And this is a heck of a defensive position. Very nice that we have the Aspiring Champions at the very least, because they should be able to hold ground for quite a long time against the uh, Chaos Warriors, especially the non-Great Weapon variety, though they seem to have plenty of Marauders and Chaos Warriors, specifically with Great Weapons. Almost as if the battle was designed to fight other Chaos factions. And go figure. Our two Giants are also going to continue anchoring the line and hopefully allow us to continue to hold. Man, this turned out to be a really cool battle. I'm pretty happy with this, I gotta say. Alright, keep on holding, keep on holding, at least on this side. We have our giant who has minced plenty of enemy chaos knights beneath him, and we'll continue dropping them with every swing of that big old club. Okay, every other swing of that big old club. There we go. <laughs> Alrighty, balance of power is at about 70%, let's say, in our favor, and we have managed to peel at least a few of the Chaos Knights away. Three of them are broken, and we are chasing them with the Marauder horses so that they don't come back. Archon continues periodically dropping Searing Dooms down upon the enemy as the enemy continues to blob up around our relatively minor numbers of uh, Chaos Warriors and stuff. Perhaps I should have made them into Chosen, especially chosen with cowbirds prior to this battle, but then how was I supposed to know that we were facing off against 8 million Chaos Knights? But it's alright. It's alright. The balance of power continues moving into our favor, and by the looks of it, most of the Chaos Knights over on this flank are done. We can see that about half of our units of Chaos Knights of Corn lie dead together with the... Uh, uh, together with the enemy knights, but we are still holding, and our infantry are holding, and it looks like the enemy has by and large broken where the aspiring champions were. And great job to them, and they haven't lost a unit. 119 kills against Chaos Warriors is a pretty hefty count. I would say. We've also seen our javelin units return, and they can now continue throwing javelins into the back of those knights that have not yet routed. Though the rest do appear to be well on the way. 90% balance of power. And just a little bit more. One more push and we should be able to take the battle. Alrighty, and Archeon has arrived to back everybody up. There's our exalted hero of Nurgle running around to help out as well. And the knights are out. Just a few more units left fighting on this flank. But by the looks of it, not for long, especially having just had a, a Searing Doom drop down upon them, and the fact that there is no way that they were going to bring the giant down. And there we go. With that, the enemy's last units shatter, and I do believe the battle is ours. Fantastic. Fantastic. That was a very interesting uh, battle. I did say that uh, the, uh, the battles that Archeon does tend to get for his quests and do tend to be a little tougher than most of the other lords, and that was a lot of units to contend with. Fun fight, though. Alrighty, very nice indeed. It felt so weird for Archeon's army to be on the defensive for once, but at the end of the day we did manage to hold. I did like a little semicircle formation of infantry with the giants acting as linchpins together with the, uh, together with the Harold, Harold Hammerstorm there. The 
Hell Cannon continued to annoy the enemy throughout. It looks like the Knights of Corn took the worst of it, but they were just uh, sent back to level one. So it does make sense uh, that they suffered for it. Uh, we are go. Oh! Make it heal up to full, but then on the other hand, it's 4k, and also we're in our own territory right now, so it doesn't really matter. We'll heal to full, roughly. Anyway. Alright, sacrifice those captives. Very well done, and the armor of Morkar is ours, and hey, a free student as well. Uh, there we go. Don't really care about the enemy hero action's chance, at least it hasn't played any uh, part in this particular... Uh, uh, for this particular army so far. And with the casualty or punishment maxed out, we'll definitely heal to full anyway. Ah, that control, it was really, really needed right now. Well done, Archie. We'll do our next quest maybe in two turns, depending. We'll see. Either way, that also ranked up all of these guys, which means more knights. And... what? Oh, do they have to be a level six? Ah, oh, no, I got excited. They had to be a rank six, not five. Oh, well. But this one should actually level up next battle, and this one maybe two battles. All right, well, we'll get the Knights of Nurgle up and running shortly. I'd like to get those Knights of Slanish, but at the same time, our hero of Slanish, who I've completely lost sight of. Now oh, here, Karan the Black. I'll rename him. Uh, he is going to be... Okay, he's nowhere near to getting rank up for the uh, uh, for the Slanashi stuff, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Ooh, we'll also have to decide whether we go Slanash Shadows or whether we just keep on Slaneshing with him. Phantasmagoria is great, and so is the Bombardment spell, but at the same time, I feel like Shadows might be the better pick for... Uh, uh, for Archie's army in particular, simply because of the ability to uh rapture oh would be nice if you kept that actually uh for the ability to give both the pit of shades which is great but uh more importantly occam's mind razor on the blob whether it be of infantry or of knights the slaneshi lore is fine, but it'll be more inclined to dish out damage, whereas we're more likely than not going to be using the Zinshin lore for that, especially because of the Warp Flame. But if it comes to buffing our own units, the Zinshin lore isn't helpful with regards to that, so there is that to consider. But anyway, uh, let's level you up, sir, Arcane Conduit. And, well, I guess we can do the other levels later. Next, Azazel. I take it you have to move again. Now, we do have Siggy coming up, and we also will want to get more of these demonettes and more of a bunch of stuff, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that you have to move towards the Black Pillar, so move ye shell. Let's get you into raiding stance. Move you out here. And I guess we'll actually want to move Jaeger relatively close, because we can use him to take the Black Pillar and then possibly Azazel to take Spite Reach at the same time. Could be the way to do it. Uh, go right here then, sir. Hopefully there isn't a, like, hidden army nearby that can actually attack you, like in Harganeth that we just can't see right now, as that would be tremendously unfortunate. You know what? We can keep safe by going into regular stance and then going right here. And there we go. That way, there's nothing that they can do. Unless they have lightning strike. It's just, just ruin us. Stop it. Uh... <laughs> All right, uh, you're going to need marauders for this army, most likely. I mean, it's we can't build a full demon army anyway, as in it's not possible. And this, ooh, we'll have to figure out what our Zinchin armies are going to look like. I actually wanted three Zinchin armies, and we have none so far. One a little bit demon-focused, one village's army, which is going to be knights and uh, chaos warriors and whatnot, possibly a few forsaken and spawn thrown in, because he likes those. And then lastly, the third Zinchin army, an all-flying army, all doom knights, a lord of change, or lords of change, cockatrices, etc. And then whatever we can get from other Zinchin uh, uh, allies. Uh, you can go into channeling stance, I guess. And I guess if we're going to get the marauders here, we can get them on the field next turn. Oh, if we raise Sugi right here, we could probably get some uh, Slaneshi Marauders immediately, though we do have the Mark, so it's kind of irrelevant. I just need all types of Marauders. A Gulator. You, I guess, are going to grab Zoyshank. Uh, hmm. How much is this worth in terms of sacking? I think... One, um... 
So here's the issue. First of all, Tech Thief, you need to find... Okay, you haven't been doing any Tech Thievery. Do we have any... Scaven Corruption 4 here. Okay, so more likely than not, it's Plesk that we have to get to. Bypassing Help It. The thing is... Minus 124, maybe... This thing is going to continue being annoying. There was a suggestion about that as well, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyway, let's uh, let's take this for now. We're going to ask Wintertooth to join war against you, Clan Molder. Like so, for a little bit of cash. Hmm. Nah, do it. Then, we are going to take Zoyshank and not sack it because I don't want it damaged. Auto resolve, teensy bit of damage, and uh, keep out. Oh, we could give it to uh, the Sorrel, but uh, right now, no. And the reason I want it as it is. Path to Glory for Hordra Demon Tamer Swell is... How much is it worth to you, Zoyshank? It is worth 24, which ain't bad. Now, if we do this, non-aggression pact, and wait, what's worth more? 44, 48, 49 defensive line. Do this, 63, plus Zoyshank, plus join war against Slavian Sisterhood and Ice Court. Then, would you give us... Uh, the Forbidden Citadel? 9.2. It is... 29k, but it is a dark fortress. Man, is that worth it? The answer is I don't know. Hmm. If we can actually just trade the dark fortresses from him, there might not be a need to actually kill off Throg, just some keep stuff. You know what? I think we're gonna do it. I know it's an insane amount of money, but I have an idea about how to go about getting it back. Do this. Take the Forbidden Citadel. Fine. Then... Defensive Alliance. I know it won't be Vassalage, but we can always cancel the Defensive Alliances later. We can do a Defensive Alliance, which gives us back... 7.9k. Oh, and the suggestion yes. was... that you could potentially break the Military Axis Agreements before breaking the rest, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Military Alliance will give us another 6.4k, but we'll save that one. Maybe... For another one of these, uh, another one of these locations. Uh, if we can make him our vassal still somehow, we might still be able to. But we can always cancel those. For now, we're busy, and it's probably better just go after Festus. And if we get the Throg later, we'll get the Throg. But at least we get the uh, Dark Fortress this way, despite uh, the cost, or regardless of the cost. Uh, you're gonna go for raid trophies, and you're gonna immediately go for Vassal Emissary here. That'll actually power Throg up a little bit, but uh, we need the public order anyway. All right, and good enough for now. All right, let's keep on going, Kukar. You, sir, have to go find the Iron Dragon, so you're headed to the Bamboo Crossing. I guess. I guess we could have gone this way, but no, it's too late. Also, it doesn't really matter. Alright, who else needs to move? Garrulus, you are going to join Kolik as his mage. Car on the black, you have to stay where you are. Blue Scribes. Hmm. The unfortunate thing about you is you wouldn't fit in with a... Man, I really wish we could get you up here. <laughs> Where this army is. Uh, yeah. I guess we could replace those pink horrors with flamers and then uh, make that sort of army. Because you need to be beside a horror army, a demon centric sort of Zinchin army. We can't have four Zinchin armies, it'll be too much. Uh, well, the campaign won't be lasting long enough. You know what? Stay here for now. I'm not entirely sure what to do with you. In fact, go back this way. I might have you join this army temporarily, just to gain XP and, uh, and buff somebody up. I really wish you weren't so far away from that other army. Once again, you really need the ability to pick where those guys spawn, as in the uh, uh, the heroes. Anyway, let's uh, take a quick look at what we have in terms of buildings. Actually, by the looks of it, we did it last time. Yeah, everything looks fine. Okay, we must have done it last time. Alright, which means we're going to pick our tech, which... Ooh, Searing Branding Iron is done. Let's go for Blood for the Blood God, and then we'll go for Arcane Branding Iron right after that, just as we get Village. And at the same time, Kukar, all of you. You get the Mark of Corn. you get the Mark of Corn. 
I'm gonna spend a little bit of cash on it, but it's necessary. And I guess we'll go for Chaos Warriors of Corn with Halberds here, because we need the anti-large more than anything in this particular army, as we basically have none. And there we go. Nice and coordinated, with the exception of the Chaos Trolls, but they'll get replaced by a, uh, another Skull Cannon, or maybe I'll keep them and add some more. I don't know, I'll think about it. We'll see. And it depends what exactly we have room for. With that, we're ready to end the turn. Path to Glory available, I'm sure it is. Add Post upgrade available, no. Damage building outpost, no. Then, Crown of Kings for this turn is going to get switched back to Hell Cannon thing. Hail of Hellfire. We need more Hell Cannons. And somebody suggested that we start popping those off periodically in order to get the, uh, uh, to get the Shagoths unlocked. And we do have plenty of souls, after all, as in as many souls as we can spend at the current time. Haven't had too much use for them because we haven't had gifts unlocked. Anyway, let's end the turn, see what Imrek does. And Hivald Blood Eater. What you doing around here? Oh, he's probably headed to Imrek because that probably is the only faction that these guys are at war with. Eranessa! Ended our trade- I didn't even know we were trading with you. That must have been so long ago, huh? Uh, well, there's a decent likelihood she'll declare war on us, but do we care? I'm not sure we do. Plus, we want to send more armies to fight more various factions, so why not? All right. Then, uh, Bitter Bay still belongs to these guys, surprisingly. Aw, oh, damn. Emrek, are you going to take Ruin Zen? Don't make us go over there. <laughs> Convoy arrives. Swell ally begins construction. Probably not for long, but whatever. And Astragruel appears to be chasing Emrek down. Is this his last territory, Emrek's, I mean? Yes, indeed it is. We are not going to subjugate him. We're going to destroy him because he hates us way too much. Uh, mm. We'll use Chant to leech XP, although out of curiosity, how many Hell Cannons do we have at the current time? Two. All right, we'll want you to get some more. And some Marauders and other such things. Uh, we can switch... wait. Turn this off. So that we can hopefully rack up another student or two. Uh, then we will switch Hail of Hellfire back... ...to Crown of Kings. Like so. Yeah, I'm doing the right ones, I just had to double check. Uh, Archeon, you are going to switch to summoning, you are going to besiege the Fortress of Vorag. And Chant, you're gonna leech XP there in a second. Alright, looks good. You can... Nah, you're still gonna resolve that. It's not worth the fight, to be perfectly frank, compared to what we just fought, especially. You need to start uh, getting Marauders in your army. Uh, do we care about Chaos Trolls? No. No Chaos Trolls for you. Uh, you can go into... Nah, I can't. Alright, go here. And do we have Marauders available here? We do not, alas, but that's okay. You're gonna be following Arcan around for a while until you build up an actual full stack. Auto resolve this real quick, it's gonna hurt our giants, I'm sure. Yes, it, indeed it is, but we have the massive uh, increase right now, anyway. Uh, sack this. Then I guess we'll put you back in the settlement. And occupy, don't subjugate, and then go here. Scarecrow Banner, Magister, the Golden Griffin of Theurgy is unlocked, and oh. Ooh, the Soul of Damnation as well. Alright, all the, I believe that's all of the final regiments of Renown. If they weren't so ludicrously expensive, I'd pop them into armies immediately, but we're gonna have to wait for at least a couple of episodes until we get a little bit more cash available. Fortress of Urag, we're not gonna repair you, we're gonna trade you and Ashridge Mountains and the Bone Gulch all to Drash. Might even want to abandon the Fortress of Urag and tell Drash to grab it. I don't know, I'll think about it. Hmm. We still have to destroy Emrick, and also in that light, he will probably besiege it, but it doesn't matter because it's only chant, so yeah. Uh, Archaon, you can switch to channeling stance, so there we go, and the rest of you are fine. Alrighty, now that looks good. Who's up next? Azazel. You and Jaeger, you, first of all, get some more marauders. Everybody start building marauders. At least they're cheap, but uh, well, Siggy is going to be on the field soon and we'll need to have an army to split these guys off, plus the Zinchin army as well. Uh, then I would like you to go into channeling stance and hit the black pillar. Like so. And occupy it immediately, I guess. 
What does a die do for us? I don't even know. Plus five leadership for Marauder Horseman. That's terrible. Okay, yeah, I might just give this away to somebody. That's atrocious. <laughs> it, it should be plus five leadership to all Marauders. Only, uh, only uh, Marauder. Uh, what? What's in? What's their faces? Horseman. That's a little bit, yeah, <laughs> a little bit silly. But anyway, take Splate Reach, would you? And I'd resolve it real quick, and that's way too much damage, but whatever, what can you do, Occupy? Alright, hold off on that. What does Wine do for us? Ah, free Warband Camp. Uh, Wine does plus five melee attack for Marauder units. Okay, so at least it's Marauders. Manticore for Venomous Soul Shredder. Yeah, yeah, why not? You can stay on the Manticore. I like that. And... You know what? I'm gonna get you Chaos Strategist. A, for the casualty or punishment, but more importantly for the unit experience gain. I think we're at the point in the campaign where we want the speed up of the... Uh, of the additional experience gained by all units. Otherwise, it's gonna take too long, especially for new armies that get on the field. And they take a long time to grow, unfortunately, so... I don't wanna wait too long. Anyway, uh, Gulator. You have taken Zoysheng, so I've traded it, and ooh, Serena Katrin is nearby, can you reach her? No, but what you can do is start moving towards her. I actually don't really care if she takes Zoysheng. Uh, go into Ambush Stance, right here. I'm gonna hope that she takes it for herself, and then we can attack her army here. And Ooh, that's a lot of Streltsy, a lot of armor piercing. It might actually be reasonably uh, tough for our... Uh, uh, for... Okay, wait, we know the Skaven are here, so we can just steal tech. Might be reasonably tough for our piles of Forsaken. And failure. Oh, come on, Tech Thief, come on. Just to double check, Zavastra. We, no, 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 we already checked you. We don't need to check you again. We know that they're here. Can we borrow your army? No. And because we don't... Ah, oh, that's annoying. Well, I guess they're not actually at war with them, so that doesn't really help. Hmm... We could ask him to declare war. These guys might move towards him. The thing is, I don't see Throt, and I don't know whether he has a full stack, like, right there. And I don't want him to kill off this fella. Which would be a bit of a shame. 21 minus 70 for 175. Yeah, 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 Throg, yeah, yeah, you're still a problem. But hey, now you only have two Dark Fortresses, which ain't so bad. Uh, Village the Cursling is back, but alas for him, I think we may not even need to fight this again. The garrison is quite weak, and Village's new army is pathetic compared to what it was before. Pyrrhic, vic Pyrrhic victory and one of our doggos will die, though. Mm, I'll think about it. Let's uh, let's take a look around and see whether we actually want to fight this or not. Garrulus, you're going to move nearby. Kagan, you're going to reinforce in March stance. We're healing a lot anyway, so as long as no units die, we don't really care. And we've already defeated Village on the field in a fairly decent fight, and yeah, there we go. This preserves the doggos. We'll do this. And I didn't double-check whether this was definitely his last settlement, but I did last episode, so yeah, now we have Enforced Confederation. He's down for a few turns, but that's okay. And that actually gives us two vassals, because that immediately gave us these guys as well. Bloodwind Keep is indeed a dark fortress, but it should be a real easy take. And we can have a user, Kagan, take it. And Kolek, you can start going to March Stance and moving this way. And, oh, damn, I shouldn't have moved Garrulus so far. <laughs> if he was here, he could have joined your army. Oh, my bad, my friend, my bad. Anyway, uh, since the village is going to take a while to go down, I think we're just going to move you towards Zatan real quick. It'll be faster this way. And then I guess we can send village down this way. I mean, all three of them are going to have to go to the sea lanes anyway. Or I guess, wait, or village can... And go here and deal with the orcs. I'll think about it. We got 21 turns until they're up. And we do have to react to them. But anyway, Kukar, you are fast approaching the uh, the western provinces, though they're having a pretty difficult time dealing with the dark elves there. Karan the Black. Archaon can no longer move, correct? Correct. Meaning, you, sir, can now have Archaon's Hell Cannon. And there we go. Karan, you join Archeon's army, and... 
His army has almost all the hero types. Oh, I wish Harald was here, because he's the undivided leader. Hmm. Almost tempted to take out Ograx and put out ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. And the little legendary signs bother me that they're not right beside each other. But anyway, you need to level up to be Slaneshied up, and we gotta get you your knights as well. Although the Nurgle knights have to take priority. And uh, do this, and go for Knights of Nurgle. Hmm. Should we do any lances versus... Eh, maybe not. We could do some lances and chance army who's going to have artillery and just tons of uh, undivided units. And some of the Chaos Dwarf units as well. Anyway, uh, the Blue Scribes. Yeah, you're going to go down here and leech some XP. Good luck to you. Uh, the both of you. And the rest of that looks good, which means no more fights, which means two things to do. Thing the first, technology up and running again. Blood for the Blood God, please. Next up, we gotta double check what we have here. First of all, vassalage. Uh, Servants of the Conclave, still. I'm starting to get tempted to attack them. I mean, there's a lot of stuff at the at Jarna Grun. There's uh, two full stacks plus a super elite garrison. Mistress hmm. of skulls. Can't say it's not tempting. Can't say it's not extremely tempting. Uh, Harbinger of Disaster. No dice in the vassalage, yeah? Alright. Well, that may come back to bite you. Uh, war host of Jarrah, and Knights, and Clan Verms all want to trade. We could trade with Verms, or we could declare war on them. I think they were previously fighting with Moors, and frankly, we need to send Moors to attack somebody, so that is something to do. And that somebody is going to be the Crooked Moon Mutinous Gits, who we can now declare war on. So I think we should. Plus it'll mean something for all of you to do. Yeah, go for the Crooked Moon. Wait. Crooked Moon. I thought these two... Eh, must have been another campaign. I thought they confederated. Uh, Crooked Moon mutinous gets, yes. Alright, good. And then we will have you... Occupy Karakate Peaks. You damn well should do it yourself, but clearly, since they weren't occupying any of these territories belong to Emmerich, we can't really trust them to do so, can we? Uh, that was this turn, so we had Crown of Kings, so we're good. Skip, skip, skip buildings, outpost commandments, not skip. Exploit vassals, what do you have here? Call of Axes? No, that's completely useless. What a useless garbage building. I mean, wait, you know what? To actually keep it for. Keep it for one turn. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the bonus campaign movement range. Uh, just for the turn. Yeah, thing? thanks for making me look like a moron game. Appreciate it. Not that you had to work very hard. Uh, exalted heroes. Okay, we still need more chaos sorcerers of various types, and we do have them available. I'm just now wondering. Well, we need two undivided chaos sorcerers for chant. Where can we summon them? We can summon them here. Uh, and if they're going to be undivided, we have to have various types. Now, if Chant becomes a Demon Prince, he will have the lure of fire. Meaning, I think we'll do Metal and Shadow. Mostly because, eh, I don't particularly like Death. I mean, the Fate of Buna is good in SFO, but, uh... And I, I, love, I do love a Soul Blight and spamming it. This would actually be pretty great in the Slaneshi army, funnily enough. Um, but there is no lore of death, Slaneshi, uh, magics. Mm. Metal is just too good because of the Searing Doom alone. Uh, ignoring literally every other spell, Searing Doom is just too good to spam. What I don't like here, however, is your options. Uh, scaled Skin and Evil Eyeball. We'll go for Scaled Skin on you. And we'll take another one of these guys as soon as they're available to a degree that I like. Anybody else needs sorcerers? More sorcerers. Azazel, you have your second one on the way. A Jaeger, you are a Chaos Sorcerer Lord, but you're probably going to need some more Zinchin Sorcerers now. You're going to become a Sorcerer Lord of the Path of Zinch. We want another Path of Zinch of Metal. So let's do Metal. Or we could do another Kindle Flame, so everybody has Kindle Flame. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll go fire to metal, but keep Kindle Flame. I like the idea. Chaos Familiar. Alright, and you will become a Lore of Zinch. Devoted Zinch Metal. Perfect. Alright. 
Be more sorcerers. Sorcerers for everybody. You get a sorcerer, you get a sorcerer, etc. Uh, let's do some building upgrades so while we can or while we have money. Uh, you're good, you're good, you are not good. You need public order. And you are... Uh, you know what? Just, 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 just build, just build the vessel. Let me say, screw it, just do it. Screw it, just do it. That's my motto. Uh, the Frozen City. You will buff this and you will maybe buff that, but that's it. Which makes me think it's probably not super worth it. And we could do one of these buildings, a war shrine here. Although it'll take so long to get any value out of it. At least this will give us an easy eight public order. Yeah, fine. Just go for the Vassal Emissary. I fear we need these everywhere just for the public order. That's the thing. So we're just going to start building them. Ooh, Carrick Vlag. Go up to uh, the next rank. We still have money remaining as well. You're looking good. You are looking okay. I'm not going to upgrade you at the current time. At least uh, the Vassal Emissary. Mostly because it doesn't make us direct a, a lot of money. Especially in those places where it uh, doesn't already exist. Aha, Forbidden Citadel. More favor. That's direct money. Money equals funny. Or wait, funny equals money. I don't know. Uh, Plane of Bones. You're good. Road of Skulls. Black Pillar. Uh, I'm still probably going to give you away, so I'm just not going to upgrade you. Then again, we don't have any dies being traded, so it might actually give us some decent trading. We don't make a lot of money via trade, but eh, more trade agreements. Might not be the worst thing in the world. Dragon Gate. Uh, we're probably going to trade you to these guys. In fact, I just had a curiosity. How much is it worth to you? Are you Dragon Gate. A drink? A 59. 9.4k? Well, well, well. Isn't that swell? Done. And the entire bastion is now held by the USAC. Uh, Wintertooth loses his outpost, but that's Wintertooth's problem. And also, while well, we're at it, before I forget, Dargoth... Harganath and Dargatha. We need to destroy the Twisted Relic, but I guess we can wait until uh, Harganath here is destroyed. Turns until the gift can be exchanged. Oh, this was still the same turn? Whoops. I thought I was last turn. Outpost commandment available again. You can go into... Well, we don't need to spend the money and we're going to trade this entire place away, so just go for exploit vassals for the bonus movement range. Though it probably won't be of any use to us as we'll probably move away from it. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, just to double check. We definitely can't do this right now, right? Okay. I just wanted to check if it was a visual bug or not in the turn. All right, everybody keeps moving, but Imrik is done for, and he's going to attack Fortress of Orag, and this does mean we'll get the defeat trait on... Okay, the Giants won't die. Good. And we'll get the defeat trait on Chant. Lovely. Free defeat trait. I'm glad we uh, kept our can outside of that settlement. Ah, Festus. Festus, Festus, Festus. Military Alliance, no, my friend. Uh, Galator is coming for you. He, uh, he has the favor of Nurgle much more than you do, and he's going to bring you into the fold. Enemy killed in battle. There's that free defeat trade on Chant. Uh, Constructor, Faction Destroyed, Knights of Caldor. Hey, another free banner of rage. And we are looking okay. Ambush foiled for Gilator. Ready for duty. Siggy. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still so happy that we managed to get him. Uh, where do we want to summon you? Wait, we got no marauders here, but we do have plenty of marauders here. And Siggy do need his marauders. He like his rudders a lot. Hmm, okay. I guess we'll have him meet up with the rest of the army. So, and he'll need sorcerers of his own. And, oh. Right. And we might actually have to delete him because the AI very likely will have screwed him over. In terms of his points assigned. Well, let's see what we're looking at here. So... The AI didn't do anything nice with the... Uh, with his unique chain. Which is dumb, but oh well. This is actually fine. No, this is fine. We'll keep him on the field. It's not great, but it's fine. Alright, now he really likes various types of Chosen and all that stuff. He does the Army Ability Fascination, Attribute Striders, Mirror Guard, Serve Him for Free, Speed Increase for Marauders, Chaos Warriors, and Chosen of Slanish. And doesn't appear to have any kind of buffs for Knights. But nonetheless, we're probably going to put some knights into his army. Ah, wait, what do we have here? Oh, this is for marauders. 
I mean, he does buff the uh, Marauder Horseman of Slanesh. But will use Horseman when you can have Knights? Hmm, I'll think about it. Either way, that doesn't change the fact that we're going to have to go for more Marauders for you, sir. And I guess you can start channeling and then start moving the next turn. Then... Yeah, I'm going to have to remember who has to go to whose army. Uh, Jaeger, can you take Harganeth yourself without interference from the uh, the other lord? Let's find out. Go here. Oh, yes, you can. Fantastic. And, ooh, what I would like you to do, uh, occupy for this for now, that we'll trade it away, of course. Path to glory, path to glory. Swell, swell, swell. I want to see... Whether we can get another Exalted Demonette, and indeed we can't. Ooh, they're only 52 now. Ah, oh, we paid like 62 for this one. Game, how dare you. <laughs> oh, that's so rude. Uh, already, also, while we're looking at uh, allied units, all-seeing eye. Mm, exalted Pink Horse. Nah, we should save that for the Blue Scribes army. Damn it, they really need to be over here instead game. Okay. Uh, you, Chaos Sorcerer of Shadows, you are going to be the Slaneshi Lord, and you're gonna move up here, because we'll meet Azazel. You can meet Jaeger, who's recruiting, and will be doing so for two turns, and he has to swap units with Siggy, and I guess, frankly, Azazel has to as well. Azazel, you're gonna go risk a march dance. That's a bad idea. Now you're gonna have a full stack right here. You know what? I'm gonna go into regular stance. I'm not risking it. We'll attack Nagaroth later anyway, with Valkia in tow. But right now, if they have a really strong full stack, I don't want them taken out as Azazel. We got a lot of armies, looks like the north is going fairly well for us. Wolfric, would you please occupy Black Creek Spire? <laughs> Why are you so useless? Listen to... The, yeah, they really need to fix the uh, way that vassals listen to orders, because that order that we gave him was not in any way out of the way. Anyway, Archaon, you're going to the Flayed Rock. And... oh, where are his armies going? Uh, I don't know. Greasy? Where do you go? Man, I wanted Archon to fight all his armies at the same time. Okay, fine, I'll just go over there anyway. Uh, go over there anyway, and then we can briefly stop by somewhere and possibly fight another quest battle. The public order is going to start dropping again in a lot of places. After all, Chant, you're still going to have to follow, sir, but keep racking up Marauders. While you go in, you can go into March Dance as well. I'll do some building and territory trading between the episodes as well. I just don't want to spend time on it right now. And Gulatour. I see Throt's not back, but Serena Katrin most certainly is. I'm tempted to let her take Fort to Stragov. Uh, but then we'll have wasted a turn, which I don't particularly like. Mm. 21-175. Are you able to give us Prague? Oh, no, you're not able to give us Prague. Uh, you have Krakadrak and Prague. Those are the only two things we want. And Oh, you can trade Krakadrak. It's 118. Um, but there may be a possibility of getting that from you somehow. Anyway, this is too good of a fight by the looks of it for us to miss out on all those Streltsy, so we're definitely going to go. Uh, you are going to get Magical Reserves. I mean, we could go Blight Boil. There's potential there as well. We don't have Malefic Sorcerer, but... Well, you know what, actually, let's get Malefic Sorcerer for the extra melee defense. Or of Chaos would actually be helpful as well. I hope you don't get gunned down by all those Streltsy. You are kind of vulnerable on that big old walking barn. Uh, hero killing blow for you, sir. You better be guarding Galator's life. That's your job, and you damn well better do it well. Uh, go for Serena Katrin. She's not going to run. Eh, have a little bit of backup. Will we need a little bit of backup? We shall see. Oh, and she has Ulrika as well. All right, away we go.
Alrighty, here we go. Gulator has arrived in in Kislev, and so has his war shrine. I'm gonna take a quick, uh, closer look at uh, these guys. I'm looking pretty neat over there. But anyway, yes, we have arrived in Kislev. gulator has got a lot of different factions uh, that he's fought over the course of the campaign, so I'm pretty happy. We do also have a little bit in the way of Norskan reinforcements who appear to be moving on the rightmost flank, and thus we have deployed all of our warhounds and both of our manticores on the leftmost flank so that both flanks are covered. The main line will head towards the enemy. The frolicking bubonicers will lead, as they always do, with a uh, curse of the leper on them as soon as they close the distance, though I'm sure they'll get riddled with uh, holes from those streltsy, and we'll see if that's enough. Anyway, speaking of the streltsy and and the manticores are moving in. I believe the bardiche that these guys have are anti-large. Yeah, so we will have to be a little bit careful about the manticores, but the manticores are here mainly to keep them in place while the poison doggos move in and dish out the damage. Can't be underestimating those poison doggos. They poison, they regen, they scare. And they've done good work throughout the campaign, and I'm sure will continue to do so. Looks like Serena Catron hits the Frolicking Bubonikers with a spell, knocking them down by about 60% of their HP, and we're going to have to back them off lest they get destroyed, but not to worry, they've served their purpose in distracting the enemy, and the rest of our army has moved in. Piles and piles of Forsaken are going to be fighting against Streltsy, and Bardi sure not. They are not going to have a very good time with it. Looks like uh, Gulator is taking at least a few bullets as he does move on in. But plenty of the enemy Streltsy are distracting, and their leftmost flank is absolutely in collapse already due to the effectiveness of the doggos. Unfortunately, our allies haven't really reached the enemy and have allowed us to move in first. But oh well. Hordra Demon Tamer is also chasing Serena Catrin around and trying to uh, knock her out. Hmm. I wonder who'd win in this contest, but generally she, even if she is a relatively fighty caster, the AI doesn't like to use casters to fight, so more likely than not, she'll run rather than continue fighting him. But not to worry, her, uh, her army will fight, and that's good enough for us, at least for now. Alright, just watching those uh, Forsaken and Spawn and do a little bit of work. Frankly, the entire battle line looks roughly similar to this because, well, uh, this is a Spawn and Forsaken army. And tactically, there isn't much to say right now, just gotta wait to grind down the enemy center, though their leftmost flank, as we've already noted, has collapsed and those doggos are gonna start to move around and hit more enemy units in the back and flanks, causing a chain reaction and the success of units to move in to collapse. Oh, lovely, and it's certainly working out well. Manticores are in as well. We're dropping our uh, piercing bolts of burning over the rightmost flank as soon as our allies have arrived, so that uh, any units clipped by it are the uh, Norskan auxiliaries rather than our own minions. And we probably want to keep all those uh, fire spells away from Nurgle as well, because the regeneration confers a weakness to fire. Don't make sense to hit the uh, Norskins in uh, two ways, uh, I guess. We should probably get some uh, Norskin uh, units in a couple of our armies, though. It does make sense to do so. Anyway, uh, looks like the enemy army is by and large in collapse. Ulrika is completely surrounded uh, by piles and piles of Forsaken. And this is a summoned unit of Forsaken, funnily enough, but it uh, looks like she's fragile enough for this not to be too concerning. And a few more hits, we'll see her drop. Oh, there we go. Though she's a vampire, so she'll be back, I'm sure. And before long, I wonder if she... Huh. I've never had her be wounded, so I don't know how long she's wounded for. I have to wonder whether she is wounded for less time than a regular lord and or hero would be wounded. Alrighty, and it looks like Serena Catrin is done. She's gonna book it on out of their hand with their lord routing with by our blood, by and large, and depleted the enemy army. It is done. Looks like this one last unit still has by our blood on them, but by the looks of it, they are a unit that's fighting Gulator, and they will flee before him.
Yeah, this is what he sees. Should try to do a battle from Galator's perspective at one point. And just, uh, just from this point. I wish there was a way to, like, lock your camera. And I know you can lock it to a unit, but for units like this, I don't think it does it quite right. And you know what? I'm gonna give it a try next time. Anyway, there we go. With that, the enemy army shatters. We're gonna do some chasing to make sure uh, that uh, most of them are dead and we can auto-resolve Serena Katrin. But we can do the rest off-screen. Alright, very nice. I mean, I expected their army to get crushed, but damn, did they get crushed. Uh, the uh, can't underestimate the classic Forsaken and Spawn combo. There's a reason that it's been persistent in the game for so long. It's just because it's that effective. Plus, the uh, Pestilent Hounds have always been a fantastic unit, especially for their cost. Anyway, we'll sacrifice those captives, and we'll chase down Serena Katrin. I hope that the Frostbite defeat trait has been removed in SFO. Yes, indeed, it has an A. The campaign movement range, I won't say no to that. Though the attrition and the Kaz terror when fighting Kislev are completely useless to us. Anyway, uh, chase down Katrin, and then proceed as quickly as you can to Plesk. Hopefully this doesn't hurt us. Alright. Uh, we will once again sacrifice those captives. Sacrifice them all. Alright, and hey, a free trickster's helm. I will certainly appreciate that one. Uh, go on to Plusk. It's going to take you a couple turns, sir, and then move back around to help it. Hopefully by the time you get back to it, they'll have a couple more full stacks for us to contend with. Just got to be careful about losing the Tower of Crack, but they won't be able to do it without two full stacks. Now... There are three territories left of the Fecundites. Looks like they're having a fairly difficult time against Azag here. And we're going to have to get into a fight with Azag anyway. Did he really... Yeah, he has Azag ignored Kislev right beside him. And ignored Sylvania right beside... Well, actually, he would generally be allied with Sylvania. But ignored Kislev right beside him in favor of attacking other Chaos factions. Ignored all the Empire factions by the looks of it. Who are you at war with? You're only at war with the Fecundites. Wow, okay. Well, no wonder Festi is having trouble. But hey, he used to have ten territories. Now he has f f three. As long as he doesn't get destroyed, uh, this will actually work in our favor. As we won't have to worry about... Uh, uh, we won't have to worry about... There's no way you're joining this army, is there? Uh, won't have to worry about uh, chasing down so many. Anyway, you're going to the Forges of Ice since it'll take Village too long to get on the field to deal with you. And I'd really love to get the heck out of here. Uh, Kagan, you're going to the Bloodwind Keep. They won't like it, but that's their problem. Alright, and oh, I actually should have traded Kagan the Marauders. Not too late now. Uh, we'll do it later. Also, we still have the Crown of Kings up and running. Yes, yes, indeed we do. Though Arcan won't be fighting in this particular turn. What I should have done is taken off blood for the Blood God until the end of the turn. Kukar. You shall return to Bamboo Crossing. Well, not return for you. I guess that would have been Kolek. But you shall go to Bamboo Crossing. And I do have to wonder whether these guys do still have an army left. I would like the defeat trait for Kukar's army. After all, and how close are you to Chaos Warrior form? Rank 5? Very close indeed. Beautiful. We'll need to get you another Exalted Hero as well. And maybe a Sorcerer, but only like a buffing Sorcerer. Just to buff him. Yes. Uh, you can keep attempting to steal tech. I don't think we need to go to Plesk. This is 6139. This is 6139. It's the same. Please don't fail and die. Hey, he succeeded. He did not fail and die. Well done, sir. And a specialist for you, then. You're feeling real special. 325. Still take three turns for all of these. Taking a while to get all the uh, techs up and running, but we're getting there. And clearly we are in the armies now. It's like in the money, but with armies. Since we're getting more stuff. Uh, for all trust the black, I forgot whose army I was going to pop you into, but I believe it was chance. And I'm going to probably make more chaos sorcerers, but I'll do so between the episodes. And when I say make Chaos Sorcerers, I meant in the, uh, meant in the game way and not the Slaneshi way. But anyway, uh, let's see. Technology. 
Or would that be the Gyran way instead? But anyway, uh, blood for the blood god, I guess we can get you back up and running now, since there's no fight. And Gifts of Chaos, we'll need to re-up the... where are we here? Where are the hell cannons? Do we have... oh, we do have Carnage Incarnate now. I'm gonna start getting those Shagoths on the field. Yeah, I'll go for the Shagoths. Kolag does want those. He likes those, as far as I can tell. Uh, we'll have to figure out how many Hell Cannons we want in here, as opposed to how many artillery pieces from our Chaos and Dwarfen friends. We don't have access to Fire Glaives from them, and alas, we don't either from the Disciples of Hashut. Actually, I should tell the Disciples of Hashut to do something. You are being very useless in this campaign so far. I almost regret not killing you. Go and occupy... You're not at war with any of these guys, are you? Guess we could declare war on these guys, but then we have nobody to protect the Great Skull Lakes, which I don't necessarily want to lose. We'll have Chant deal with this most likely, as Archeon will move this way. It's probably the way to do it. Hmm. At least Zatan will probably give us access to Fire Glaives, and I really would have liked access to all of these units. You have trains immediately, but you're still not our vessel. Uh, <laughs> maybe if we get like 300,000 gold, they'd be willing to do it. Or if somebody randomly declares war on them, but I'm actually not sure whether the AI can uh, declare war on them just as a thing that it can do. Gore Queen, Crooked Moon, Mulder, y'all want peace, but you ain't getting it. Uh, Wintertooth wants a military alliance, but we're saving that in case we can force them to giving us up Krakadrak or, one, or Prague, one of the Dark Fortresses. And we're now gonna end the turn. Yes, the rest is good. Looks good to me. And we still have a Valkyrie to hunt down, Azazel. You gotta keep going. And then meet up with... Uh, yeah, I guess you move up here and then we'll meet up with Sigvald here around the Spiteful Peaks. Swap all the units around with all these armies. And then go. Uh, oh, Sigvald, we need you to get sorcerers. Uh, there's a little lure of Slanish here. I guess we're picking you. Sign from the gods as far as I'm concerned. And... Hmm... We could do death, experience gain extra, do it faster. Yeah, let's do death. I like so. And you're going to both join the Slaneshi army. Nice. And I forget who you were joining. All right, you're joining this army, you're joining that army. A lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of sorcerers running around, but I did say that that's what I would be doing. In fact, wait, just before I end the turn. You know what? Actually, I'm going to call this episode here. There's probably a bunch of other things that I want to do. Building, building, more sorcerers, maybe some exalted heroes, some admin is what I'm getting at. So I'll call it here, I'll do that, and then we'll end the turn at the start of the next episode, rather than wasting time on that. Speaking of next episode, a decent likelihood will go for the Crown of Domination or the of Shirian uh, for the additional public order. Uh, it'll be the Eye of Shirian in terms of going by order here. The Zinj Authority doesn't really do too much for us, but I do have to wonder what we have to face off against here. The Hell Cannons will be kind of an issue, but we do have enough Chaos Knights to probably deal with it now, but who knows what the reinforcements are. The Forsaken are basically non-existent, and Arcan can handle them all, essentially himself. And we'll also go to Flayed Rock. I might just vassalize the... Uh, I might just vassalize Goldtooth for the additional buffs that we get out of it. Hopefully he doesn't take any provinces before we get there, as that might be annoying, but we shall have to see. Anyway, more Archeon to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold. Stay tuned for Sigvald's army, Village's army, and the two new undivided armies we're starting to build, as well as whatever else we can get on the field within the next few episodes slash turns. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.